What is up, everyone? Happy November, which is, as it is known on BookTube, Sanderson Month. Uh, I just finished Words of Radiance, and oh my goodness, a lot of things to say. First of all, if you're a Sanderson fan, definitely subscribe. I'll be reading Edge Dancer hopefully tonight and hopefully getting through that very quickly. Then, you know, boom, of course, Oathbringer, which also is part of my workout routine. Look at this thing. This is massive. And then I'm told Rhythm of War will be even bigger than Oathbringer. Uh, But yeah, that comes out the 19th, so... We're going to try to catch up. But yeah, anyway, Words of Radiance review. Just briefly, no spoilers right now, and then I'll get into spoilers, thoughts, opinions on everything, but no spoilers first. Um, If you liked Way of Kings, I think Words of Radiance is actually better than Way of Kings. If you thought Way of Kings was too slow, like a little too slow for you, uh, but you liked like the characters and the magic system and the world and stuff. Um, I think wor- Words of Radiance is for you because this is definitely a lot faster. I think a lot more things happen. There's a lot less time spent for like character development and you know all that stuff that a first book needs. The stakes in this throughout the book feel pretty high. Like it doesn't really suffer from middle book syndrome. Or certainly not as you're going through it. Again, even though this is faster than the first book, it's still like a massive epic fantasy. So I wouldn't characterize this book as like fast pace. But considering how big it is, yes, it's fast pace. The magic system, obviously, if you liked it in the first book, you'll continue to like it. But if you thought it was like too vague in the first book, I think you're really getting not the entire picture in this book, but you're definitely filling in a lot of the gaps and figuring out basically everything you need to figure out. Whereas in the first book, some of the time I felt like I didn't quite know what was going on with the magic system because you're, you're, you know, you're thrown in right away. And early on, I don't think you're supposed to know what's going on in Wave Kings. But now that I know what's going on, I think that's a lot of why I liked Words of Radiance more than Wave Kings as well. Again, I loved Way of Kings too. These are both five-star books, so, you know. And that's why I'm, like, ambitiously and aggressively trying to go through all of Sanderson's works in the Stormlight Archive before Rhythm of War comes out. But yeah, enough of that. Let's talk spoilers. Real talk. So if you don't want spoilers, go away. Go somewhere else. <laughs> um, so this is really like Shallan's book, right? Like in the first book, we had Kaladin flashbacks. In this book, we have Shallan flashbacks. And the way Way of Kings ended, man, I wanted some questions answered. Um, I figured that Shallan had a like traumatic history. So for me, Shallan, who was my favorite character in the first book, doesn't really skip a beat. She picks up where she left off. I like her exploring her magic. And I like, like, the whole illusionary thing, you know. I like Kaladin's story, too, but, like, you know, the warrior is a common fantasy archetype of character. I haven't read, like, a good sneaky shallan type magical character in some time. So maybe I'm, I was just craving that sort of stealthy illusionist archetype. And yeah, I like how clever shallan is. The women in this world are really, like, always, like, the clever ones because you know the men can't read and stuff the men have good instincts you know like dalinar has great combat instincts and stuff and adolin as well dalinar has like a great you know moral compass i would say but like someone like sadius has great instincts for um political maneuvering you know and kaladin has great like leadership instincts and bodyguard instincts but you know none of them are like scholars really and being a scholar with powers in a world where the king and high princes just don't have powers that's an awesome dynamic so yeah i continued to like shallan's story and i like the little romance like conundrum that shallan's in oh man i i love a good like hilarious romantic subplot and shallan has the banter with both catalan and adolin you know um i think i'm on team shallan kaladin though i mean i i just think they're a better match even though it started off on like not the right foot at all with the boots oh man the boots so funny i don't know shallan just cracks me up issues with this book um i was kind of expecting someone to die you know jasna obviously dies very early 
but like she doesn't die uh, I don't know I feel like that could have been explained better like there were hints that she was like something happened like her body was gone but I don't know like the book ended and I'm like what the heck and then of course Syl Syl was properly hinted at that she could come back I think so I I was like less problematic with the way all that went down and like it was clear to me that Kaladin would have to um like utter another phrase or words or whatever or like do something that matched Sill's ideology to get her to come back Seth didn't die either which is cool because I like Seth but uh yeah definitely a ton of questions and not too many answers with Seth which is okay and then the dude who found Seth is one of the heralds or whatever um and then there there's a few heralds that we've gotten the perspective from obviously like the very beginning of Way of Kings, that's a Herald's perspective. There's the one who's killing people in the interludes. There's the one that met Zeth. And crap, I'm trying to think if there's another one. Oh, the one who like showed up at the end of the first book and talked to Wit. So that might be four or that might be like three if like some of those are the same people. Because the interlude one is named Darkness. But that, I mean, like that's obviously not his name. <laughs> or is it his name? Like, I don't know. But yeah, it. oh man, these books would be so interesting on reread. I can't wait to reread these because I, I'll just like pick up so much more. And I know like, you know, probably other heralds are being hinted about and I'm just not picking up on it. But yeah, Edge Dancer should be interesting. Um, the Lift, the character from the very long interlude at the end of part three, I think, is what Edge Dancer's about. I wonder where that'll go. It's cool that she has, like, healing movement powers. That's, like, awesome combat medic style. So, yeah, I think I'll like Edge Dancer, even though I'm not, like, like a super fan of Lift, really. She's okay. She seems like a never-grow-up kind of, you know, young adult. And she seems well-traveled, too, so... We'll get to see uh, see the world a little bit, you know? Dalinar, I have not talked about yet. Um, his ending was very strange. I was, like, th under the impression that Dalinar was somehow a Radiant. And, like, he had a Spren that couldn't talk to him, but was sending him the visions and writing on the walls. But it turns out it was, like, the Stormfather doing that? Or, like, a piece of him? Or, like, a Spren of him? I, like, I... I don't know exactly how to describe it. So, like, yeah, he has, like, this powerful being kind of giving him, like, the Radiance powers. But we don't really know exactly what's going on with that. And I'm definitely... it's This book is definitely set up to be, like, the Dalinar book, you know? So that's exciting. Um, also... Teravangian, King Teravangian. Oh man, what an interesting concept. He gets great brilliance or great stupidity or like, you know, average intelligence and it's just like random every day. And then there there were the epi epigraphs that were n his notes or whatever. And one of them was like to watch out for Dalinar to see if he's, to see which oath he takes. It's kind of crazy that I know he's like super smart that one day when he wrote those notes, but like how did he know that like Dalinar even like could choose what oaths to take? It's just craziness. So yeah, that's definitely something to watch out for. Overall, I just love this, right? I love the assassin in white too, you know, Zeth. He's a good middle book villain. Like, he clearly works for people, but he's very strong and powerful. It was kind of clear that he's, like, not the same as Kaladin and Shallan, even though he has, like, you know, the same sort of Radiance powers, or as Kaladin in particular. But, like, when Kaladin and Shallan take in Stormlight, it's, like, very, you know, subtle. But when uh, Zeth does it, it's, like, steaming out of his eye sockets and stuff. Like, it's just not subtle at all, and, like... I don't know. It seems like he just like uses Stormlight like very quickly and like traveling. He was talking about traveling after his first assassination attempt and he made it seem like it was very difficult for him. So, so yeah, all of that. And yeah, I understand now why you read Warbreaker before you read this book because definitely the end. But yeah, like, comment, subscribe. If you're reading Oathbringer, join my Discord because there will be chat. And yeah, just join to hang out. We have a politics channel that has been very active this week. I talk about soccer. I, um, yeah, I mean, obviously we talk about books, fiction, nonfiction, fantasy, a lot of fantasy. So check that out. Like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, see you guys next time.